Last month, I blood tested for the third time in 2022. And when using Dr. Morgan Levine's biological age calculator, we saw that my biological age was 14 years younger than my chronological. Similarly, using aging.ai, 17 years younger than my chronological. So what's contributing to these data? What about supplements? So in terms of supplements, there were three. Uh, first, levothyroxine. Uh, I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism uh, in my 20s, so I've been taking levothyroxine for the past 20 plus years. Vitamin D, 1,000 IUs per day, every day uh, during the 56-day period that corresponded to blood test number three. And then uh, a little bit of mel melatonin. Note that that's about 53 micrograms per day, not milligrams, but micrograms. So uh, occasional, very small amounts of melatonin at night. And that's it for supplements. No senolytics or geroprotectors. So what about diet? So in terms of diet, uh, since 2015, I've weighed literally all of my food with a food scale. And those food amounts are then entered into Chronometer. And Chronometer is a food tracking app that I've used since 2015. I can't say which is the best, but that's what I've used. So along those lines, if you want to get a Chronometer membership discount link, it'll be in the video's description. All right, so when considering that I've tracked my diets in 2015, what's the diet composition, including macronutrients, micronutrients, and individual foods that corresponds to this blood test? So let's dig into the approach. In March, more specifically March 14th, I blood tested for the second time in 2022. And on March uh, May 9th, I blood tested for the third time. So in between, blood tests is a 56-day period. So the average intake for those 56 days, including macro and micronutrients and individual food amounts, correspond to test number three's diet composition, and I then enter that data into a spreadsheet. Now, I've done this for, uh, since 2015, and I have up to 37 blood tests since 2015. So because each blood test now has corresponding dietary data, I can calculate correlations between diet with 24 big picture, as I like to call them, blood biomarkers, which are representative of many organ systems uh, and other things like glucose, insulin sensitivity, etc. So I can calculate correlations between diet with these big picture bu blood biomarkers, and then are the significant correlations, the ones that have a p-value less than 0.05, going in the right or wrong direction in terms of aging and all-cause mortality risk. Now, in this video, I won't detail how the, the directionality of the biomarkers in terms of aging and all-cause mortality risk, but you're, if you're interested in, the, in that data, just leave a comment and I'll direct you to where I've uh, shown that data in other videos. And then note that following these correlations may be important for optimizing not only the blood, blood biomarkers, but we can get towards a more direct approach for precision nutrition. In other words, optimizing diet while also optimizing blood biomarkers. So, so let's have a look at the diet composition that corresponds to this blood test and see how well I'm following these correlations. So first, calorie intake. So for the 56-day period that corresponded to blood test number three, my average calorie intake was 23, 23 calories per day. And when doing the analysis for uh, the big, big picture biomarkers with calorie intake since 2015, the net correlative score is negative six. So what does that mean? And let's dig into that a little bit more. So here we're looking at correlations for calorie intake with big picture biomarkers. And a few notes, uh, N, little n, little n next to each biomarker is how many blood tests that I have for that biomarker. So for example, for glucose, we see N equals 35. That means I have 35 individual data points for glucose since 2015. Similarly for homocysteine, I have 19 blood tests, creatinine, 37, et cetera. And then the little r at the top left column is the correlation. And then next to that is the p-value, which is the measure of statistical significance. And if it's less than 0.05, it's a significant correlation. So the net correlative score of negative six is up there. And that's because we can see that calorie intake is significantly correlated with this, these six biomarkers. And again, I won't go into direct, directionality, but note that each of these are going in the wrong direction in terms of aging and all-cause mortality risk. In other words, a relatively higher calorie intake is significantly correlated with higher levels of each of these biomarkers, which again are going in the wrong direction in terms of aging and all-cause mortality risk. Now note that when there is a net negative correlative score, that suggests that I should eat below my average intake since 2015 using the data that I have since 2015. Now based on these data, test number three's uh, calorie intake uh, was 2323, which was purposefully below my average intake since 2015, which is 2559. So for that, I give a check, which means that I'm following the correlations. Uh, just to note, if I wasn't following that correlation uh, or the net correlative score, uh, with a higher calorie intake, say I was eating 2,700 calories, that would be that I'm not following the correlations because the data suggests that I, sh I should eat below my in average intake, not above it, which would probably lead to worse biomarker data, at least based on the net correlative score. Now, a couple of other situations are possible. 
When there's a neutral correlative score, so an equal amount of biomarkers going in the right and wrong direction, in that case, I would eat my average intake since 2015. And in the situation when there's a net positive correlative score, I would eat above my average intake for that, for that given nutrient or food even uh, since 2015. So let's, take a, let's look at more examples. So again, this is the average intake for uh, test number three for the 56 day period that corresponds to that test. And we're looking at my protein intake that corresponds to test number three, which was about 99 grams per day. Now that too has a net correlative score of minus six. And I won't go through each of the biomarkers that it was significantly correlated with. If you're interested in that data, just leave a comment and I'll uh, indicate which were going in the right and wrong direction. And I may actually do a live stream at some point with uh, each of the correlations for each individual uh, macro or, or micronutrient so that you can actually see uh, what's, what's going in the right direction and what's going in the wrong direction. All right, so protein has a net correlative score with these big picture biomarkers of negative six. And that suggests that protein intake below my average intake, again, since 2015, may be optimal for my blood biomarkers. Now, my average protein intake since 2015 is 113 grams per day. So 99 is less than 113. So for that, I am following the correlations. Again, if I was eating above 113 because of that net negative correlative score, that would expect to lead to more biomarkers going in the wrong direction than right. So to minimize that, eating below my average may minimize the, the potential adverse effects of too high of a protein intake on multiple biomarkers or multiple blood biomarkers. All right, so as an approach for optimizing blood biomarkers, how well am I following the correlations with diet? Let's go even further besides just calorie intake and, and, and protein. Let's take a look at carbohydrate intake. So on the right, we've got the net correlative score, and on the left, we've got my average uh, intake for each of these uh, macronutrients since 2015. And note, first note at, at the top of the list is fiber. And based on the USDA dietary guidelines uh, for someone in my uh, chronological age group, what's uh, recommended is a fiber intake of about 33 grams per, grams per day. So we can see that for this blood test, my average fiber intake was 86 grams per day. So what about the net correlative score? So there we can see that my, the, the net correlative score for fiber is plus two, which, uh, and when considering my average intake is 97, with a positive net correlative score, that suggests that for uh, I should be eating above actually uh, 97 grams per day to have a net positive effect, potentially have a net positive effect on the blood biomarkers. But I was below that for this test at 86, so that gets a uh, an X. I need to do a better job of uh, fiber intake and try to get it closer and above 97 grams per day. So this goes beyond, this approach goes beyond the RDA. By using this approach, we can actually see, you know, how much is optimal beyond just following general recommendations. How much should we eat using this biomarker-based analysis? All right, so next up, total sugars. So for that, I track total fructose intake because I have a tendency to eat a, a, a lot of fruit. And uh, in terms of uh, uh, fructose, uh, total fructose intake, that's equal to fructose plus sucrose divided by two because fructose is half fructose. So for that, we can see that the net correlative score for total fructose is minus three, which suggests that I should eat below my average of 87 grams per day, which was, again, since 2015. So for this test, the total fructose with fructose plus fructo uh, sucrose divided by two was 62 grams per day. So that's below 87. So for that, I am following the correlations and we get a check. All right, for net carbs, net correlative score of plus two, that suggests I should eat above my average intake of 235 grams per day. And I did for this test with 257, since 257 is higher than 235. So that two gets a check. All right, so what about lipids? So again, on the right, we've got the net correlative score and then the average intake on the left. So we'll go through these one by one and then I'll start to show uh, all the rest of the micronutri micronutrients by just showing uh, large patterns. So first, total fat, net cor correlative score of minus seven, which suggests that I should be eating below my average intake, which was 86 grams per day. So for this test, I averaged about 81 grams per day. So that gets a check so, because I'm, I'm following the correlations. A net negative score suggests I should be eating, eating below my average intake. So fat can be further subdivided into mono and polyunsaturated fats. So monounsaturated fats have a net negative uh, a net correlative score of minus one, which which suggests I should eat below my average intake of 17 grams per day. So for this test, the average 16 grams per day, which is below 17. So that too gets a check. So polyunsaturated fatty acids can be divided into omega three and omega six. Both omega three and omega six have net positive correlative scores, which suggests I should eat above my average uh, average intake. So we can see that for omega-3, 8 is higher than 7, so that gets a check. And then similarly for omega-6, 17 is higher than 16, so that too gets a check. 
So then for saturated fat, we can see a net negative uh, score of minus seven, net correlative score of minus seven. So a lot more biomarkers, blood biomarkers going in the wrong direction than right in correlation with a higher saturated fat intake. So that data suggests I should eat below my average intake of 27 grams per day. So I did for this test at 21 grams per day. So that gets a check. And then last but not least, uh, even though this could qualify as a micronutrient, uh, cholesterol has a net negative score of minus nine. Again, suggesting I should eat below my average intake of 132 milligrams per day. So for this test, I averaged 34 milligrams per day, which again is below my average intake and I'm following the correlations. So to summarize for macros, nine out of these 10 situations, I'm following them except for fiber. So for the next test, again, I'm going to try to bump my fiber intake even higher than it was for this test, uh, 86 grams per day, to try to also follow uh, all of the correlations for macros. All right, so what about vitamins? So we've got them listed here, and then we can see their net correlative scores. And then starting from the top, just to, just to go through this, um, so thiamine B1, vitamin B1, net correlative score of one, which suggests I should eat higher than two milligrams per day, but it was exactly two milligrams per day, so that gets an X. Riboflavin's data suggests I should eat below my average intake, but I was above it, so that gets an X. And then we can see niacin, and I've put the RDAs here just for reference, because my niacin intake is two and a half times the RDA. And you know this again goes to this idea of how much is optimal. Uh, and this approach can also be used for supplements in comparison with blood biomarkers to see how much of a given supplement may be optimal. Now, in my case, my niacin intake is not based on supplements, it's whole food. And we can see that the net correlative score for niacin is plus six, which suggests that I can go even higher than my average intake of 35 milligrams per day, which I did in this case for uh, niacin with 40 milligrams per day. So it gets a check. Similarly, uh, vitamin B5, net positive score of plus two, 11.1 is higher than my average intake of 11. So that gets a check. And then we can see a net neutral score for vitamin B6. Now, my average intake has been seven milligrams per day for B6. For this test, it was 3.3 milligrams. So that actually gets an X, which suggests that I can go higher. Now, I've supplemented with B6 in the past. And when considering this data suggests that I closer to seven may be optimal or somewhere in between three and seven may be optimal, uh, I'm, I'm considering reintroducing vitamin B6 supplements uh, into the approach. Now, in terms of that supplementation approach, here we can see B12, which I have supplemented with many times for many tests in, in the past. And B12 has a net correlative score of minus six, but a lot more biomarkers going in the wrong direction than right. Now, my average B12 intake is 571 micrograms per day, which you definitely can't get from diet alone. In fact, uh, my 10 micrograms per day was diet alone for this test. So when considering that B12 has a net correlative score of minus six, that suggests I should eat below the 571, which I did. So I'm following that correlation. So the folate story is similar to B6. It's got a net neutral score, which suggests that my more than 1100 micrograms of folate for this test can go higher, somewhere up to about 1500 micrograms per day. And that too, to get to those levels, I've used uh, methylfolate as a supplement. So I may actually consider uh, including that again in the near future. Uh, okay, and then last on the chart is vitamin A and its uh, related carotenoids. So vitamin A overall, total vitamin A has a positive score of plus one, which suggests I can go higher than 105, uh, about 105,000 I use per day. And again, note that the RDA is only 3,000 and I'm way above that. And we'd expect that if being way above the RDA was bad for the biomarkers, I would see very strong negative net correlative scores for example, using vitamin A. And that's not what we see. We see a net correlative score of plus one, which suggests that I can go even higher than where I was for this test, about 95,000 IU. Now, vitamin A divides into the five main carotenoids. And here we can see that uh, within that, alpha and beta carotene have net negative correlative scores. So that suggests I should eat below my average intake, which I did for both of these uh, carotenes, 12,000 for alpha carotene. So I'm following that correlation. Uh, so I'm following the correlation for alpha carotene and similarly beta carotene, I'm following that too as uh, uh, 50,000 micrograms is below 54,000 uh, and eating below the, the, the average intake is suggested based on that net correlative score of minus six. Now, in contrast, beta cryptoxanthin has a net positive uh, correlative score of plus three, which suggests that I should eat above my average intake of 4,300 micrograms. But for this test, I was at 1671. So going forward, I'm gonna reintroduce uh, butternut squash, but in relatively small amounts because I have a tendency to eat just way too much of it. So uh, let's see how th those correlations look in future blood tests. 
So to finish up the uh, vitamins, we've got net correlative score, average intake since 2015. And then just going through the first four, we can see that I didn't follow them or I'm, I need to increase, uh, sorry, I need to decrease um, uh, my levels of lycopene because I have a net negative correlative score and I need to increase my lutein plus zeaxanthin, even though it's relatively high at 23,000 micrograms per day. I'm following the correlations for vitamin C and vitamin D, but the one I really wanna, wanna point out here is uh, vitamin E. So vitamin E has a net correlative score of minus eight. And even though 20 milligrams per day is higher than the RDA, uh, the net score of minus eight suggests that less than my average of 25 uh, is what I should be doing. Less than, you know, eating less than my average may be optimal based on that net correlative score. So with that in mind, I'm at 20 milligrams per day. So for whatever reason, too much dietary vitamin E is associated or significantly correlated with many more biomarkers going in the wrong direction than right. Now, in contrast, vitamin K has a net positive correlative score. And note that my average vitamin K intake that corresponds to this test was about 14 times higher than the RDA. And again, if intakes that high were bad for the biomarkers or quote unquote, quote unquote bad for health, we'd expect to see relatively super physiological doses. And again, this is from diet, not supplements, but we'd expect to see overall net negative correlative scores. Uh, for example, vitamin E, but that's not true in the case of vitamin K, which has a net positive score, which suggests that I should eat above my average intake of uh, 1500 micrograms per day. And I did that for this test. So that gets a check. All right, so uh, let's go through the minerals real quick. We've got the net correlative scores and we can see that uh, it's a mixed bag. Uh, some of them I'm following the correlations and others I can do better. So to summarize the micronutrient summary, I'm following the ones the most negative and most positive. So for example, vitamin E has a net score of minus eight, calcium minus seven, niacin I think was plus six. So I've been following the strongest positive and negative correlations thinking that because they're correlated with so many going in the wrong or right direction, that following those should have the biggest impact on my biomarkers. Uh, but improvement for many others is possible as we can see by all of the red X's. Now, if I do a better job for, for getting these micronutrients to also follow the correlations, will my biological age using the Veen's test and aging.ai and other blood biomarkers, you know, looking beyond just the simple biological age calculators, but really getting towards that, you know, biochemistry of youth, will they be further improved? All right, so what about food composition? Um, what does that look like for test number three? So we can see that here. This is the average daily, uh, daily dietary intake for the 56-day period that corresponded to test number three in 2022. So I ate uh, 45 different foods, and I won't go through you know, uh, the uh, amounts and which you know, top 10 and all that, but what I want to point out is that even though I'm on a mostly whole food-based diet, I do have cheat days or cheat meals. And we can see that here. And it's important to raise this point because someone in a forum uh, saw this data and maybe didn't watch the whole video and thought that I literally eat five grams of ice cream sandwiches or, or five grams of caramels every day. And that's not the case. Um, when I do have a cheat meal, it, it's like immediately after the blood test, I have it and I'll eat a relatively large amount, maybe a thousand calories. And then I'll also do that on the day after the test. And then I do my best to shut it down. Literally no junk until the next blood test. So in this case, it was 54 days that I had literally no junk uh, after the first two days of having the ice cream sandwiches and caramels. Now, this approach works best for me. Uh, I, once a week doesn't work for me, once every two weeks. This is what I've developed over time, again, that works best for me. And also as, uh, I guess, a little bit of junk, I, you can see gum on the list. I chew gum during my standard 70 to 80 minute workout. I don't know why, it's just, uh, you know, it's just the thing I've always done. So. Other than that, it's whole foods, as you can see, based on the list. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.